Last time, we learned how to texture bake the base color of this procedural material. So today, we'll be baking our roughness map slash image texture. This video works as a standalone follow along, so no need to watch the last episode. However, if you do want to follow along from the last tutorial, you can open up your saved blend file and follow along from the timestamp showed up on the screen just now. If you didn't watch the last tutorial and just want to watch this video, you can also follow along by just downloading the file in the description below and follow along with me now. To start off, I'll left click my cube and press X, since we're going to create our own one. Then I'll press Shift A, Mesh, and I'll left click Cube. I'll then left click my drop down in either the shader editor or in the material output properties, my prismarine material. The reason I deleted and re-added the cube is so we can create the UV from scratch. I'm just going to drag out my top left hand corner here and that will open up another 3D viewport. We're not going to use this as a 3D viewport though, we're going to change it to the UV editor. Then I'll press Tab which will turn me into edit mode and if I press A it'll select everything and here we can see what our UV looks like. This is the default UV for cube. I'll then press with everything selected, I'll press U, Smart UV Project. I'm going to change our island margin to 0.03 since that's what we used in the last tutorial. If you want to use something a bit smaller, I recommend 0.01. Keep in mind though, you want to keep it the same size if you're going to use this roughness texture with the texture we made in the previous tutorial and in future tutorials in this small series. I'll press OK and here we have our new UV. Now I'll just drag up this here and now we can get a good look at our shader. Where this roughness input here is what we're going to be baking. Blender will bake the rough of the shader that's plugged into this material output of this object. Next up, we need to have something that we can bake onto, and this will be an image texture. So I'll press Shift A, then under Texture, I will left click Image Texture. I'll then click Plus New, and here we've got a 1024 by 1024 square image. We're going to want to make this 2K, so I'm just going to times this by 2 by left clicking the top one, dragging my mouse down 1, left clicking the end of this number, press Shift, and then the number 8 key, which will create a star sign, and then 2, which will then times it by 2. Then all I need to do is press Enter. Now we've got our 2K texture, I'll uncheck the alpha channel and just press OK. I'm going to change my color space to non-color and now we have our image texture ready to be baked on. If I zoom out in my UV editor, you can see it's created a plain black image under our UV. That's because we have this image selected. Next up, we need to set up our bake settings. First of all, we need to make sure we're in the cycles render engine, since texture baking is a process that occurs in cycles. Then in our render settings, I'm going to set my max samples to 10, since baking does not require a high sample count for rendering. And I'll just set my min samples to 0. In bake, I'll change my bake type to roughness. This will tell Blender to access the roughness from the shader plugged into the output. And also, I'm going to want to change my margin, since in the last video, when we didn't use a margin, it created some lines on our cube, which we didn't want. So again, I'm going to change the margin size to 8. And that will create an 8 pixel margin size around each of our islands, which are these squares here. Now all that's done, I'm going to press Ctrl S, which will save our project. That way we'll be sure if Blender crashes, we can recover our file. I'll left click my image texture, which I'm actually going to rename from Untitled to Prismarine Roughness. Then all that's left to do is just to press Bake. Now our bake is complete, you can see it in our UV editor. That means we can now use this image texture instead of the procedural nodes I've plugged into this roughness parameter of our shader. It also means we can use this image texture in other 3D softwares, allowing us to turn our Blender procedural materials into images we can use in Blender and in other software. First though, I'm going to need to make sure I save my image, since this image isn't automatically saved into Blender. That means that if I was to close Blender without saving it in this specific way, image would be lost. So to make sure that doesn't happen, where it says image with a star beside it indicating it hasn't been saved, I'm going to left click the image and then press save as. And then all I need to do is choose a location to save my file. Once you've saved the file, you'll notice that that the image will not have a star beside it indicating that it's been saved. If you make any changes to your image later, such as by baking it again to fix issues, all you need to do is left click image and then press save and it will override it. I'll then press tab to go back into object mode, Z on the keyboard and then go to rendered. I'm going to plug my image texture into the roughness just to preview what it looks like and also to demonstrate that this image texture works as an alternative to using procedural nodes. So I'll plug my color into the roughness. It seems like the texture has been lined up perfectly but just to be safe, I'm going to add texture coordinate node to make sure it's accessing the UV's coordinates. So press shift A, then under input, I'm going to left click texture coordinate. Then I'll plug my UV output of my texture coordinate into the vector of this roughness image texture. And there we go. Now you can see what it looks like. You'll notice in my render preview, we have some lighting already, and this can be found in the HDRI in the description below. But with that, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. And if you did enjoy, please make sure to like the video, subscribe, and share it if you know someone who you think would find it useful. Thank you again for watching, and take Take care.